that's a, those are disturbing noises that they play there. But anyway, anyway, uh, welcome back, everybody. Even as investors have poured money into stocks this year, exchange-traded funds are closing at a record pace as some of those more niche funds struggle to attract investors. Deidre Bose and Kate Rooney have been uh, covering this uh, over in the San Francisco Bureau. Let's go out and have them join us now. Hey, guys, take it away. Well, Tyler, niche is really the key word here, right, Kate? Over the last few years, it felt like there was an ETF for everything. And when you're thinking about shorting a company or another ETF, it provided maybe a more straightforward way. But it turns out they weren't all that sustainable. There was, what was there, the Gen Z ETF, the yep. Metaverse ETF, the cannabis-themed ETF, all gone. Completely. ETF for everything. These niche, niche, whatever you want to say, ETFs. It feels like it, they were chasing some of this momentum and as a result, some of them really got into the top. So yeah. if they launched, a, say, it's a metaverse ETF, a cannabis ETF, they're so thematic that they tend to launch when there's a lot of buzz around that. And you can see with stock prices, that tends to also coincide with the peak. They had these crypto ETFs, inverse ETFs. One interesting trend, though, rates is a big part of this. Yeah. So higher rates just make the opportunity cost a lot higher for some of these non-profitable tech companies that we talk about a lot. But the tenure above 4.25, that hasn't happened since 08. Bond ETFs were a thing back then, but not nearly to the level that they are now. I think there's something like, well, Strategis had some numbers on this. 61 bond ETFs in 08. There's more than 600 now. That is the area. Money market funds, bond ETFs, the boring ETFs that really It's, it's such a reflection of where yeah. we are in the markets. It's that it's no longer sort of the buzzy ones. But I'm looking at the AGG inflows over the last year of, I think, $14 billion. So these are huge. But also, you think about what's been leading the market this year, it's been the mega caps, the Magnificent Seven. So you think you could just put your money into the QQQ versus trying to pick out, I mean, you and I were talking, like, what's even in the Gen Z <laughs> ETF? You look it up, and it's Tesla. OK, a lot of folks want to hold Tesla. But do they want to hold it with Duolingo right. and some of the other ones that people are? And the fees is another is another issue. That's a great point, right? As a Gen Z investor, you might say, well, I can pick my own stocks. Thank you very much. I don't need you to tell me that a Duolingo is a Gen Z name. But really interesting, it also speaks to some of the investor psychology out there of wanting to pick single stocks versus having this broad-based ETF. And we also learned earlier in the year that stock picking can be hard. So you see when macro trends shift, I was talking to someone from Piper Sandler about this. You see, whether it's talking about the Fed minutes or OPEC, you see when that's going on, that's the big macro conversation. People really flow into just broad-based ETFs. When the market's going up, people kind of feel like they're smart. They want to get into single stock names, and you see that with NVIDIA. The other point uh, that they made was that there's a lot of money going into leverage and derivatives. So they're seeing flows up way above 2019 levels hmm. when it comes to options, futures, derivatives, right. and it's also a sign of risk that people want to take that risk on. When you look at the sheer numbers, so this year so far, there's been nearly 200 ETF closures. In 2022, it was 142. So we're actually on pace now to see the most number close, that maybe record that we've ever seen. And it's not, though, that investors want passively managed ETFs. Yep. You actually see actively managed ETFs from someone that's becoming bigger on the scene, like a J.P. Morgan Chase. So yep. it's very nuanced here, but I think the buzzy stuff is no longer sort of as attractive. But you know, I know one that you've covered closely, meme stocks, yeah. right? And there's even an ETF for memes, and it's actually, it hasn't performed badly this year. It's interesting. Some of the bigger asset managers are just the ones that are able to lower fees and have the scale to maybe lose money and use these as a loss leader. And so it speaks to some of the competition among asset managers. But interesting, I mean, meme stocks do really tend to be a barometer for risk, and, and you're seeing that return. But right. for, they want to buy single stocks. Also, zero commissions is a big part of this. We don't talk about a lot that commissions went to zero before the pandemic, and there's also fractional trading. Right. So if you want to pick stocks, you can buy 10 bucks worth of NVIDIA. And five years ago, that just wasn't an Versus option. paying an ETF fee, right, to Kathy Woods and even the ARC? ETF has seen outflows over the last year. Tyler, jump in here. You know, I, I guess I, I have a couple of reactions. Number one, I, on the face of it, nothing seems like a worse idea to me than a Gen <laughs> Z-oriented ETF. I mean, it feels so random. Disagree. I mean, how, how do you do that? And, and I, I guess I'm, then that goes, secondly, to, th things are a thing, you know, you guys said that. It's a thing until it stops being a thing. And then when it stops <laughs> being a thing, it's all over, game, set, and match, and the, and the whole thing. And, and, the whole thing. And then, and then the third thing I, is, when does a, an ETF stop being an ETF when it becomes a managed ETF? 
isn't it then just a mutual fund, or is it the <laughs> is it the ability to price the ETF minute by minute that is the distinction there? You know, Tyler, it's such a good question. And to answer the first part of it, I mean, if money is coming out of the ARC ETF, who wants the short ARC ETF, right? It feels like there was this opportunity. We've seen this in so many different financial products. And mm -hmm. it's really a theme of the last few years that, you know, people who have ETF companies can get a lot of attention by making it. It was never really meant to be sustainable because if someone, you know, the, the short ETF, ARC ETF closes down, maybe maybe those customers will look at putting their money yeah. in another ETF that's managed by the same company, right, Kate? I but you're right. It's a good question. I mean, in the first place, why? I, why I love what you just said there, that, 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 that some of these companies are, are putting out these ETFs simply to get attention. That, that's that's, that's a great. That before, that's right? the right. kind of investment I get pulled into every time, man. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just, it's, I, yeah, I don't know. Kate, finish it off. I honestly, Tyler, you said it all. By the time it's a thing, it's already a thing, and the value is priced in. So I feel like a lot of these thematic ETFs were just that on steroids. And it's a, a meme ETF, and you're buying at the top. So it's probably a leading indicator that right. you maybe would want to stay away, and it's you kind of miss the boat if it's already a fun, An fun. AI ETF, though. Maybe that'll have legs. I <laughs> <Yeah>. mean, <laughs> Anyhow, we'll fun to talk, guys. Thank you very much, Kate. And uh, Thanks, Deirdre, Jeff. we appreciate it. Still ahead, shares uh, the chief policy officer of Coinbase will join us uh, for an exclusive interview about the impact yesterday's federal court ruling will have on the crypto industry. Next.